uh, paper in this section, which is to finish out our series on <coughs> preparation of molecular sieves. Uh, this paper is a contribution from Belgium, the Catholic University of Louvain. The title of the paper is Synthesis and Spectroscopy of Vanadium Molecular Sieves, co-authored by L.P. Vanuj Bow. Okay. You want to do the call? From Neville Rickhausen Schoen. And uh, the presenter is uh, Wen Busen. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The subject of my presentation today is Synthesis and Spectroscopy of Vanadium Molecular Sieves, a contribution from the Center of uh, Surface Chemistry and Catalysis of the Catholic University of Leuven, Belgium. Vanadium, like all the transition metal ions, is well known for their catalytic performances. And therefore, many researchers have tried to uh, hydrogenize this metal ion onto the surface of inorganic oxides, either crystalline or amorphous. In the case of crystalline oxides, molecular sieves are well known, and therefore many researchers have tried to incorporate this metal ion into the lattice of these systems. However, the state of vanadium in these materials is rather controversial, and vanadium can be present under different op oxidation states, different coordination states, and different polymerization degrees. Therefore, the two main goals of this research work are, first of all, to study the influence of the synthesis conditions, gel composition, synthesis time, and so on, on the state of vanadium in vapor 5 molecular sieves. And secondly, to find, to search for spectroscopic fingerprints of lattice substituted vanadium. First of all, I want to discuss something about the synthesis and the characterization of these materials. We have synthesized the FAP of 5 materials according to a patent of Fleming et al. And here I have given you the gel composition with R, the template, V, the vanadium, aluminium, phosphorus, and the water content. We have varied two things. First of all, the synthesis time. The synthesis time was varied between 0 and 168 hours. And secondly, the initial gel composition, the vanadium content, the template content, different template molecules, and the phosphorus contents. And all materials were synthesized at 448 K. As templates, we have used triethylamine, tripropylamine, tetramethylammonium hydroxide, and tetrapropylammonium hydroxide, and finally, dipropylamine. And the solid products were characterized by the following techniques. First of all, we have used XRD and scanning electron microscopy to follow the crystallization process of these uh, materials. And secondly, we have elucidated the state of vanadium in this material by using two spectroscopic techniques, mainly diffuse reflectance spectroscopy, DRS, and electron spin resonance. And first of all, I want to discuss with you the chemistry of the initial gels, the gels where you start from. These gels are light blue to blue. And are characterized by the following diffuse reflectance spectrum. Diffuse reflectance spectra show a main band around 13,000 reciprocal centimeter. But in any case, they are broad and encompass several bands. In any case, they, are due, uh, they, uh, they can be assigned to a pseudo octahedral vanadium 4. And this vanadium 4 plus can be washed off from the initial gel is washing and centrifugation. And this is evidenced by the decrease of the intensity. B is after one washing mm -hmm. procedure, C after the second one, a third one, a fourth one. So vanadium-4, as a pseudo-octahedral ion, has only a, a low affinity for the initial gel and can easily be washed off. Second point I want to discuss is the crystallization process of these materials. We have synthesized the different FAP of 5 materials as function of synthesis uh, times um, initial gel composition, vanadium content, and so on. And here I show you some of 
X, uh, of our XRD patterns as function of the vanadium content of the FAPO5 materials. A is 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, and 0 0.08 vanadium in a FAPO5 material. For the lowest vanadium cones, we see that we have the pattern of a pure ALPO5. But for the higher uh, loadings, the intensity of uh, the, the pattern decreases, and for the highest, at 0 0.08, we have also the formation of uh, extra lines in our XRD, which are indicated by E. So both observations indicate that we have the formation of less crystalline materials and also the formation of an extra lattice phase. Or, in other words, vanadium retards the reduction uh, um, synthesis of upper five materials and gives us the introduction of a new phase. We have also chemically analyzed some of these samples. And here I show you the chemical analysis of FAPO5 molecular sieves as a function of the initial gel, uh, vanadium content in the, in, in the initial gels. And the chemical analysis is expressed here as the vanadium plus aluminium over the phosphorus ra uh, ratio. For the lowest vanadium contents, we see that we have a ratio near one. For the higher loadings, we see that it's deviating from one, it's higher. So for the lowest loading, one, one can say then that if vanadium is substituting in the molecular sieve, vanadium is substituting for an aluminium side. For high loadings, we can explain this as the formation of an extra lattice vanadium phase. We have also studied scanning electron micrographs as a function of different parameters. And here I show you one of such uh, micrographs. And this is a sample, the 0 0.02 vanadium, of 5 after synthesis um, during 120 hours. <coughs> we have encountered that the best crystalline samples are obtained when we are synthesizing between 48 and 120 hours. Low and higher uh, synthesis times give rise to less crystalline samples. We have also synthesized samples as a function of different template molecules. And the best of the uh, best crystalline samples were obtained when we are using tetramethyl um, ammonium hydroxide, three propyl amine, and three ethyl amine. The other templates were not uh, very useful. So then I come to my third point of my lecture, and that is okay, first I want to summarize something. The crystallization process. Well, you can obtain good crystalline VAPO5 samples when you are using the following <coughs> gel composition and when you are applying um, synthesis time between 48 and 120 hours and by using these three templates. The best are these two and to a less extent the tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide. No crystalline samples or the formation of extra crystalline phases were obtained when we are using, were using high vanadium contents and when the ratio of vanadium plus aluminium over phosphorus was deviating from one in the initial gel and when we were, we were using the, uh, these uh, template molecules. So then my third point is then what about the state of vanadium in these materials? Therefore we have used two spectroscopic techniques electron spin resonance and diffuse reflectance spectroscopy. And first of all, I want to discuss with you the electron spin resonance spectra of FAPO5 materials. Here I show you some of these ESR spectra. A is the lowest <laughs> loading, 0 0.01, at measured at 300K, at 120K, then uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, and 0 0.08 vanadium. For the lowest loading, you can see that we have to do with two different vanadium species, denoted as D1 and uh, S1 and S2. This uh, vanadium 4 is a D1 system with a Y of 7 over 2. So it's giving an octet uh, structure when it is an, if it is an isotropic signal. 
It is following the curie wise law, so we have to do with an isolated vanadium species. When you are increasing the vanadium content, you have the formation of a broadband under these two signals. A broadband, broad signal, uh, centered around G point, G2. And then the spectrum is not following the curie wise law. Mm. So indicating the presence of some oxidic uh, vanadium phase. You have also followed the spectra as function of treatment, pretreatments. And A is a, a synthesized material. B is after an oxidation at uh, after um, heating uh, in oxygen at 110 degrees Celsius. C 550 degrees Celsius, and D is reduced uh, with uh, carbon monoxide at 350 degrees Celsius. A synthesized I've just discussed. So B then the intensity is decreasing, and C, in, after calcination at 500, uh, 500 degrees, it's almost disappeared, the vanadium 4. And reduction gives a regeneration of um, the vanadium 4, all to the spectrum is not really identical. So there's a little distortion of the vanadium 4 compared with as synthesized materials. We have now quantified these spectra, this means double integration and comparing it with a reference standard where you know the, exactly the spin density. So this is expressed in, oh, <coughs> illustrated in the following figure. Here I, I've given the spins, the gram spin density as function of the treatment. One can see is that spin density of vanadium 4 is decreasing with uh, increasing oxidation temperature. And then by reduction you can regenerate partially the amount of vanadium 4. It's important to stress that the amount of vanadium 4 you can probe by EPR is only 10% of the total vanadium 4. So but with EPR you are only probing the magnetic, magnetically diluted fraction of vanadium 4. We are, we are in a sense interested in what is now the coordination state of this vanadium 4. We have tackled that problem by doing some simulation procedures. So, this is an experimental one. And we have tried to simulate it by, by using two of the, by uh, simulating first these two uh, S1 and S2 signals, the isolated vanadium species. Here I show you, both for S1 and S2, an example of a simulated, a theoretical ESR spectrum. I've given here for you the uh, EPR parameters. They are slightly different, but in any case we have used a rhombic Hamiltonian to simulate. By appropriate summation of both species, you can build up the following theoretical spectrum. This theoretical spectrum nicely fits the experimental one. Only here you have some deviations, but it's quite good. So these, these parameters we have used are typical for a distorted octahedral site. So vanadium-4 in as synthesized materials are uh, present under a distorted octahedral coordination. What now, about, what now about the diffuse reflectance spectra? Here I sh show you some of these diffuse reflectance spectra. So cobalt and is function of the reciprocal centimeter. A is one obtained is an as synthesized sample. B after calcination and C after reduction in carbon monoxide. So here A as synthesized C reduction. As synthesized. Um, sample has two main bands in the uh, DD region. T uh, 13,100 and 60,500 reciprocal centimeter. When you compare it with reference compounds, it's typical for pseudo-octahedral vanadium 4. And by, by calcination, these bands are they disappear. And you have a new band around 36,000 reciprocal centimeter. This band is a typical uh, oxygen vanadium 5 charge transfer. 
is due to isolated um, tetrahedrally co coordinated vanadium-5 or vanadate. So one can say that yeah, maybe uh, vanadium is um, incorporated in the lattice. However, you, have, you can have also such a band when you are uh, impregnating vanadium onto an amorphous support and calcining it, and then you have also the same band. So this is not an, um, a good argument to say it's incorporated or not. By reduction, you have the formation of a new band, which is at a little bit lower energy level as for the synthesized sample, and is in any case due to reduced uh, vanadium for a vanadium we assign to vanadium for in a little bit different coordination from um, compared with uh, as synthesized samples. So, up to the conclusions now. Well, I've shown you that. Vanadium-4 in vanadium in the initial gel is present as a pseudo-octahedral species and has only a small affinity for the gel. I've also shown that the influence of the synthesis condition on the state of vanadium is rather small. You have always to do with pseudo-octahedral vanadium. We have found some spectroscopic fingerprints. In the case of asynthesized samples, we have pseudo-octahedral vanadium-4. After calcination, tet tetrahedral vanadium-5 and after reduction, so the optimal vanadium 4. It's important to stress that with EPR you can probe only 10% of the total vanadium content, whereas with diffuse reflectance you're probing the total vanadium content. We have uh, no unambiguous evidence to, to, to support an I really isomorphous substituted vanadium. It is just vanadium surrounded by four oxygens of the lattice. And I want to finish my talk with some acknowledgements. First of all, I want to acknowledge the National Fund of Scientific Research of Belgium for, research, for the grant as research assistant. <coughs> Secondly, a travel grant to visit the United States and the Fonds for Collective Fundamental Onderzoek and Geconcerteerde Onderzoeksactie of the Flemish government for financial support. And last but not least, all of you for your attention. Thank you. The reason why you stressed. Uh, Please identify yourself. I'm sorry. Cotton Dale Lehigh University. The reason why you're stressing so much uh, as the fact that ESR is detecting 10% of vanadium uh, was it due to the fact that there was a discrepancy in relating your DRS spectra of the reduced sample? with your friends you found with the ESR spectra? No, uh, it's not, not really unusual that you can probe with uh, EPR only a fraction of uh, the vanadium of, of a metal ion. The problem is that in EPR you can only probe uh, mag magnetically isolated species. Um, if they are not magnetically isolated, it's uh, rather complicated to quantify because then you have interaction between the ions and so then you have broader um, broadness of the, your spectra, and so it's impossible to quantify. So the reason why you, um, you're probing only 10%, in my opinion, is that because um, you have to do with oxidic vanadium particles, which uh, are broadened beyond de detection, and so are not contributing to your EPR spectrum. Can I have a follow-up? Sure, please. Uh, in the DRS spectra of the reduced sample, you saw a new feature. Yes. Whereas on the ESR spectra of the, new, uh, of the reduced sample after oxidation, you said that you retain but not totally the reduced. And in the conclusion, you're saying that both are pseudo octahedral B plus 4. Are you yeah. trying to differentiate between them? About that assignment, we are not really sure. Um, we can say that the vanadium 4 obtained after reduction is slightly different from that obtained after synthesis. So. Um, you can't say uh, it is the same uh, coordination. Um, we have seen that in the case of reduced uh, vapor fibers, the S2 signal, I've denoted as the second isolated species, is more intense than uh, for the S synthesized samples. Then uh, when you compare the diffuse reflectance spectrum, we have seen that the band is shifting to a lower energy value. That can only mean that you have less uh, ligand around your vanadium.
points for a different. Um, not necessarily gel count varies over a very wide range, from zero to 160 some hours, right? The gel time. Yeah. Okay. Was that done intentionally or not? Well, um, yes, we have done it intentionally, but it, it was rough to see when crystallization starts really. So this, the crystallization starts around 24 hours. So then you can obtain the first of the, you can obtain half of five materials. But the best materials you are obtained only after 48 hours. It was your question. So are you controlling the gel time or are you just letting? Oh, it's the gel time. Sorry, yeah. uh, gel time. No, um, the gel time. It's uh, we have prepared, uh, mixing the, all the the, react, uh, the agents and then you we. We stole it for one hour at, uh, in an ice bath, so it was, we have done it always in the same way. Okay, so what are the gel time? It's, it's, it's rather standard in our lab because we are, we are doing the same for yeah. crop of five, uh, crop of five materials as well. Uh, there's a question at the back. Jacques Petrin from the Institute of Catalysis in France. I want to ask you the following things. You know that when you try to substitute silicon by linear elements like titanium, vanadium, and so on, you often create defects. And as you said, you have kind of unambiguously said that your vanadium is incorporated into the lithis. But let's suppose it is in some defect within the lithis. Okay. When it is in that position, they are very sensitive to water. Mm -hmm. Means if you degas your sample and introduce some increment of water, you should see your ESR spectrum changing. Did you make such an experiment? Yes, uh, I've not shown it, but we have done first uh, vapor treatments on such thing. We have also introduced ammonia on the samples. In the case of vapor treatments, the spectra doesn't change ma ma uh, very much. In the case of uh, introduction of ammonia, they change, and uh, S2 signal will uh, increase in intensity. So there is a uh, change in the EPR spectra, but they are not so large. When you say, yeah, okay, uh, it's not uh, incorporated, but you are creating defects, it's true. Uh, but then you are, you can compare it with studies where they are crafting uh, metal lines like titanium or chromium uh, on, for example, silicolite. So then you are also not speaking about a real isomorph substituted metal line. It's more a grafted iron. My first Nakash friends, could, could you write the illustration behind the oxidation and reduction of your vapor? Could you? Could you write the chemistry which is behind the reaction, uh, oxidation, of reduction and oxidation no, I, in the vapor? I've never tried that. <laughs> it's, your problem is maybe with you, when you are using carbon monoxide yeah, and uh, you're starting from vanadium five, yeah, then you need to uh, have two sides close to each other to to make such a reduction, it's true. Or the lattice is uh, playing a role in that reduction reaction. Right. We have never uh, studied that. So when you oxidize your sample, yes. do you add oxygen to, we the, add, to uh, the system? Yes. Do you form a VO species? Yes. Sure. But vanadate, you have, we have evidence for the form formation of a vanadate species. Not more, nor less, not less. Any other questions? Okay, if not less, thank you.